Thank you. Are you able to see a screen, Tim? Uh, I can see you. Put it in Excellent. presentation mode. You may put it in presentation mode for everybody. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. There you go. How does it look now? Perfect. Okay. Uh, we've heard a lot about the functionalities that Web Focus Designer offers. We've heard, we've seen a demo with uh, how do you build a content inside of Web Focus Designer. Now, I want to talk to you about approach. If you are an organization that has, um, you know, that has a lot of content, and if you own Web Focus for quite some time, and if you are uh, trying to um, organize your thoughts in terms of how do you move to Web Focus Designer, you know, do I um, do I take the entire content, move to Web Focus Designer, and, and you know, and the uh, the content starts working inside of Web Focus Designer? How do I think about the process itself? Is what I want to talk to you about. I want to organize this in three different sections. First is the motivation. Um, we heard a lot from um, Joe on the new uh, functionalities, new features that Web Focus Designer offers. But from hearing our customers and customers that wanted to move into the designer framework, potentially involving a version upgrade as well. Um, you know, there were some items of motivation that I wanted to talk about so that it gives you some, some thoughts on what are some areas that you, know, you can think about and how can, what can you build inside of Web Focus Designer. So there'll be some elements of uh, the functionality help, uh, we've helped our customers build applications with that I want to talk about. And centrally to this discussion is process. So a lot of the customers have come, come to us with, you know, do I move this entire footprint? How do I look at this footprint? Um, and how do I make decisions um, as with regards to what content stays? Uh, what do I build with uh, the web focus designer? Can these two coexist? Questions around that. So I want to address some of those. And then later, I want to have a uh, show you some uh, you know screenshots of um, application one application that we built with a customer that started out as a Dev Studio App Studio built application, then became um, a, a, a designer built application. Again, the intent of that is for you to get some ideas on if you are you know trying to thematize some applications that you currently have and you want it built inside of a web focused designer. What are some of the things that you can get? What can it look like? Things like that. Um, now, what matters most? So what are, why are some of the customers, um, some of some organizations moving into a, a designer frame, framework? Superior mobile BI capabilities. Um, again, native out of the box makes a, the development experience almost next to nothing. The development effort almost next to nothing. So, you know, again, this was available with App Studio and the previous versions as well. But for a developer, this, you know, it's all native, it's all out of the box, and it's just a matter of uh, a configuration check. And all of the content now is, you know, uh, for, from a user perspective, is available on, on the mobile interface very easily. Um, and a very important thing and a very understated thing is the um, standardized development interface. So if your organization, I think Joe referred to the personas building content. The most important thing, thing here is that um, for objects that are being used by your business user, objects that are being used by your you know, end user that's gen generating content and, and publishing information to your highly skilled um, enterprise scale development, highly customized application. All of those interfaces are now very similar. So they're all in the same room then you know then they can talk to each other and people can understand each other it's not like you know it's all heavy code driven things that the developers working with there might be some elements there that where code is involved and, and that you know the tool certainly provides flexibility for that but the interface itself and the experience itself is very similar across persona um, and the ability to add filters natively to your charts e um, the ease of adding filters to your charts um, and the key here is the out of, out of the box nature. Again, these were all available in App Studio and previous versions, but now it's just a lot easier. Um, and then when the uh, filters need to be chained to each other, there is some relationship between one filter to the next. Then, you know, and, and when you're doing that, you also need um, some manual edit capability. Now, all of that is that, that experience of building the chained filters um, of one dimension talking to another dimension is just a lot easier now. Um, the next one is really, you know, ability to add style and output format, you know, whether it's an HTML5 format, HTML5 
PDF. A lot of these were available before. Now everything is easier by default. Um, another important uh, element is the report customization. So here, uh, this refers to tabular reports. If you're if you're looking at tabular reports, if you're building tabular reports, um, and then you know your your the query that generates the reports has already brought back what it's supposed to. Now you want to uh, send out reports to your customers and have it look a certain way. Add pa page breaks, aggregations at the right rows, uh, um, column level aggregations, column level sorting. All of those can be done uh, very close to default using designer, which means that you know operational reports. So again, that's one of the myths that Tim was talking about. It's not just a quick drag and drop here, build your, uh, you know, build your application, publish your application type experience. If you need to do heavy customization for your outputs, as well as, you know, what you're filtering, dimensionalization, the entire experience is just becoming easier and easier. And I say this from working with uh, Web Focus Designer for the last few years, we've, we've seen our experience working with customers getting easier. Um, now, auto link and auto drill. Uh, the, I think AJ referred to this in his demo. Uh, what I want to say here is that as long as your data is truly hierarchical, as long as your the integrity of that hierarchy is maintained, then you know your auto drill and auto link and um, you know ability to have one dimension talk to another inside of a drill down level is immense. And we've had customers that come again. There are few examples of customers that that have operational level reporting and analytical re uh, reporting in the same application. Typically, we would advise them not to have that, but you know, there are cases where you, you know, that has to happen. And when that happens, you know, when you want to do an auto link, auto drill at some level where it's not your, you know, your top level, you'll still have to be, have the ability to do that with web focus designer. And I think there were some questions around JavaScripts and CSS. Yes, you know, there's flexibility around that too. Uh, if you need to style your report, your, your uh, dashboard, you style your uh, application a certain way, and need to inject CSS, need to inject JavaScripts, you can certainly do that. With Designer. Now, the process of move to Designer. I think so. This this slide covers the evaluate section of this, which means how do you understand your footprint? So again, and this, you know, and people, this is just an act of organizing your content. And I have it um, done a certain way because of um, our experience working with customers. So, um, you know, you look at your entire footprint. Now you're moving to uh, the designer. You want to build everything with designer come in the future because um, there's more, uh, you know, more innovations coming. There's uh, more fixes and, you know, any problems, any issues being fixed um, really fast. Now, from a content perspective, how do I look at it? So I look at it as you know four different buckets of content that you've already built. The bucket one is scanned reports, parameterized pages, and non-visual reports. And why I have this um, as bucket one is you know a typical scenario is that you probably don't want to make a lot of ch changes to this. I will, however, um, address one scenario where it might be good for you to to uh, you know, have a reset point and look at your canned reports and then build a thematized application. But we'll come to that. But outside of that, the bucket one is typically something that you don't want touched. You already built it, it's already functional, it's working, and it goes on. Bucket two are you know, visual applications, dashboards, your executive summaries, things like that. Um, that's where you're probably wanting to look at uh, Web Focus Designer and say, you know, these are the gaps in my functionality. How do I address them? And bucket three would be self-service applications, where you have a bunch of filters that you have to select from. Your inputs have to be customized a certain way. And then once the report is generated, then you want to customize your outputs a certain other way. So there's a lot of asks around you know, having the, the, the finished content go a certain way to your customer. And the people that are, that are using it have to go through multiple checks and balances, multiple filters, um, and and uh, uh, expression filters, operators, things like that. Then those are self-service applications, and you know I have those bucketed separately. And bucket four are is the user-owned reports. If your if your users are building their own reports, their own content, and publishing them, then that's bucket four. So that way, uh, you know when you're looking at it, it's kind of an organized set of buckets. And in most cases. Bucket one and four 
will remain as is, except in the case where I mentioned where you want to consolidate reports, especially when you're having a reset moment and when you're looking at, you know, when you want to build, you know, 50 reports. A lot of the customers that we've worked with um, have, have had, you know, develop, uh, development um, happen um, simultaneously and de development community that's just building reports after reports. That creates a maintenance hassle. Um, and you don't, you know, at, at a certain point, you're looking at all the content and saying, you know, you, you just don't know um, where it started from, what kinds of changes it went through, and how whether it's needed now, who's using them. So those are questions you don't want to have, you don't want to answer later. So if you, if there is a recent moment, if you're thinking about the uh, move to a web focused designer, that's a moment you can take advantage of and look at consolidating canned reports, look at consolidating groups of reports and bringing them to one um, central application. And that, uh, that central application could be a self-service application or a visual application. And typically the, that thematization happens by, you know, the, a few different dimensions that I've looked at is being the audience, audience being the central one, the people consuming the information is critical um, and security considerations, who has access to the content and, you know, uh, and, you know, what level of access do they have? Um, and with respect to modernization, the one thing I would say is that, you know, the, the gaps in functionality, why you're moving to a, a designer and what made you, you know, what functionalities uh, that, you know, the product group showed you or you were at a summit and what, what, are the, what uh, functionalities made you make the move to designer. Once those are articulated, then it just, be, just becomes an act of building the, the application appropriately. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the process of the move to web-focused designer. This um, assumes that you, know, you are in a previous version of, of uh, web-focused. You're moving to a newer, newer version where the designer framework is kind of the default development tool. Um, I'm not going to address the, uh, the migration artifacts or uh, remediation aspects that you have to uh, that you have to uh, you know address for the code to work. If, if if you have code built a long time back, there might be some, some things, but that's not the focus of this. But if you are talking about using Web Focus Designer as your tool of choice, development tool of choice, then how would you do that? The first step would be to port over that the entire footprint. Again, now that we've gone through that first um, act of evaluating your different applications and bucketing them. And then now you poured over the entire content. There is no real uh, worry about you know the old content and new content coexisting. You know all your if, if your reports are working today, um, uh, you know your reports should you know your your uh, analytics content should work as is. Um, now the visual application content will remain as is. So anything that needs to change and needs to be modernized with the designer framework is what you're considering. Now, once you know what you need to modernize with the designer, you develop the chosen applications in the designer framework. And you're you know, looking at you know, specific themes, specific functionalities. I'll show you an example of what we've done. Um, and then you're building all of your applications in the new designer framework. That's kind of the process we've worked with our customers. And this gives them a direction on how to address a move of a bigger footprint into a web-focused designer built framework. So this is an example of a customer. This is uh, before we started, um, you know, helping them. And uh, this is a customer that, you know, again, they were very clear in what they wanted to achieve. So one of the things you'll see here is that the customer number was um, at least meant to be a, a global uh, entity, a global parameter that had to traverse across uh, all these different tabs, across you know, uh, the, these portals and tabs inside of those portals. Um, also, the way for them to, how they were uh, getting their information was they were go going down, drill down levels with a preset condition. For example, if they had a, a, a member, member flag Y, they had to go through a, a, um, some levels of uh, drill downs. Then if they had to change that flag to uh, N, they had to come back all the way up. So there, there was a circuitous path that they had to follow. And um, another thing is that, they, you know, this is one application that they wanted uh, where they wanted a summary type information where, you know, they wanted top five of, you know, sellers, buyers and things like that. Um, but they were able to get that, but the, the path for them to get, get that was going to be circuitous and there a lot of manual effort involved with that. 
So, for, so the, what you're seeing here is the is the after the first information screen that was built using um, Web Focus Designer, and this gives them all the information about the customer that they wanted. And this customer number now travels across the different portals, and also gave them a lot of other information relevant to this customer. Um, what we also did was also made the uh, the dimensionalization more dynamic. Uh, what I mean by that is, if they wanted to Set, select a member flag as no and generate a quick report, they were able to do that. And if they needed to uh, select a, uh, uh, a particular cell zone, as, uh, in this case, they were able to do that. And they were able to uh, you know, uh, generate a reports you know, send, uh, and uh, uh, schedule it through Reportcaster, all of those things. And in addition to that, the landing page, especially for the uh, management um, user base, became something like this, where all the information that they wanted on first go was available to them just as as, as a um, you know as a as a quick summary, top five vendors, buyers, item status, things like that. Now again, it depends on your use case. If you're you know this is a an operational and an analytical use case at the same time. Um, and but if you have use cases like that, you can have um, you know web focus uh, the designer framework help you kind of build out um, build out that thought process for what could be that landing page, what kind of information is disseminated across the uh, drill down levels, um, and and build it out that way. And this was built consistent to their UI uh, themes, the, the the organization's UI themes as well. And we also had you know. Um, a good type ahead, tap ahead. So previously, what I forgot to mention there was that they had to memorize their customer numbers. And then if they had four or five, then they had to write it down on a piece of paper. Now they didn't have to do that. Now, keep in mind, all of what I've said here is just a as much a design exercise as it is capabilities with Web Focus, Desi Web Focus Designer. So Web Focus Designer allows you to do all of this, but this is also a design exercise. So once we did this, they were able to type ahead and they didn't need to memorize customer numbers and whatnot. And what designer allows you to do is to really good real estate management as well. So we built a collapsible uh, set of collapsible panel for them to have not so frequently used um, filters. So what you see up top are the ones that are by default needed for, for um, a lot of the users. And then there were some that were only specific users. So we were able to create that um, really good user experience as well as um, as well as well you know the, the, the uh, dashboard itself, the application itself looked good without you know, seeing a bunch of uh, dimensions. So that's, that was an example of what we've done with the customer. Certainly, we've, you know, we're continuing to build a lot more applications for our customers, and we're, we're learning um, along, you know, this, as hopefully the same pace as the product is, is building the new features. Um, and another thing here is the centralized content. Um, again, a best practice. So I mentioned where you know, organizations that have um, content, content built by different developer bases, uh, offshore teams, onshore teams, uh, people that don't necessarily talk to each other. But with designer, you're able to bring the files in a common location and you know have have files uh, be access to development based on uh, you know style sheets, based on themes, uh, based on uh, other business logic as well. So that you know the development experience, wherever it is built and whoever is building it, is as as standardized as possible. Um, so this is kind of an example of hopefully this gave, gives you an idea of you know what else designer helps you do and how you can help build an application using the designer framework. And if you have specific questions around your particular application, we'll be happy to set up a call and, and, and talk further. I'll hand this back to you, Tim.